This is a quick overview of what we have covered so far in our personality topic. As I told you, there are three different theories that you will have to learn um, for the final exam, and we have covered one of them so far. The first theory we have covered is the psychodynamic theory, and we are focusing on the theorist Sigmund Freud. Um, just to remind you that other schools and other teachers may teach other theorists, uh, we are focusing on Freud. So this is what you need to know so far. Sigmund Freud is probably the most famous theorist in the field of personality because he was the first theorist to come up with a complete personality theory. And much of what we know and understand about personality now and the works of um, theorists that have come since Freud have based their knowledge and their research on some of his key ideas. Now given he um, was addicted to cocaine, he also had some very strange ideas surrounding sexuality and um, the relationships or the repressed desires we have towards our parents. So there's a lot of um, concepts in Freud's initial theory that are disregarded now because there just hasn't been any empirical evidence to support them. Um, there's no validity proven. So a lot of what he originally theorized, we kind of take with a grain of salt, which means we don't take very seriously, but it is an interesting theory um, to learn about because much of what came next was based on Freud's initial um, theories. So what you should learn is that Sigmund Freud's theory is based very much around the role of the unconscious mind. Um, so Freud was the first person to theorise that there are aspects to who we are and to our psyche that are controlled by unconscious aspects of our personality. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Now he took that a little bit further and said that um, a lot of these unconscious desires are linked to um, conflicts that we have in terms of um, our relationships to our parents. Now, like I said before, we know that that isn't necessarily true. Um, the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex are not proven to exist. However, the part of his theory that did gain traction is that your childhood and the events that occur in your childhood, the relationships you have with your parents, any trauma or embarrassment, it can actually be stored in your unconscious mind and it can impact the person who you grow up to be. There has been evidence for that. So let's get into the psychodynamic theory. The first thing that you have to know is that Freud broke down our personality into three different levels of consciousness. Um, it is often referred to using the iceberg model. The reason for this is because the iceberg only has about 10% of its structure above the surface of the water. Um, this is what Freud referred to as our level of consciousness. So your consciousness is what you are thinking and feeling right now. Just below the surface of the water is the pre-conscious level. These are the thoughts and feelings that you're not experiencing right now, but if something prompted you to remember or feel a certain way, then you could make those memories, that knowledge into your conscious level pretty easily. The iceberg model is used because the majority of an iceberg sits below the surface of the water. And this is what Freud said about our unconscious mind. Freud theorized the majority of our personality is dictated by our unconscious aspect of our psyche. And you can see there, these are all of the things about ourselves that would be traumatic or troubling or embarrassing to admit to. So selfish needs, our aggression, um, our sexual desires, anything that makes us feel ashamed, anything that is immoral. You can also see superimposed there the, id, the, the ego and the superego. We're going to talk more about those in a moment, but um, it's good to know that the, at the unconscious level, that is primarily dictated by the id. The superego, which is the other extreme, kind of sits across all three levels of consciousness. There are aspects of our superego that are judgmental and 
if you think about it, the reason that we have feelings of shame and embarrassment in the bottom of our iceberg at our unconscious level is because we've passed judgment on ourselves for whatever it is that we've done that have caused those feelings. And that is down to the super ego. The id wouldn't make us feel shameful or embarrassed because it's just embracing pleasure. The super ego is what causes us to have um, those shameful repressed memories. Super ego also works in the pre-conscious and of course it can be conscious too if you're actively using your super ego to judge yourself or others. The ego is primarily conscious or pre-conscious. So let's talk more about these three forces in our personality. So please don't get these confused. The first were three um, levels of consciousness and now we've got three forces in our personality. So the id, like we said before, this is um, the part of our personality that operates on what we call the pleasure principle. It is all about gaining pleasure right now without any concern for the consequences. It demands satisfaction. It's the first part of the personality to develop. It develops as soon as you're born. When you're a baby, you need to pursue pleasure right away just to get the basic needs in your life. To the other extreme is the super ego. This is your sense of right and wrong. This is your morals and your judgment. Um, it's your conscience. It tells you what is the right thing to do and what is the wrong thing to do. So both of these are the extremes and I have referred to the id as the devil on your shoulder and the super ego as the angel on your shoulder and it's the role of the ego to balance the two. The ego should allow a small amount of pleasure from the id by balancing it with what is important to you in terms of your roles, your, sorry, your morals or your ethics of the super ego. It needs to allow both of those extremes to be met. The ego is based on the reality principle. It's the moderator between the id and the super ego. The ego does this by using defense mechanisms. Defense mechanisms are things that the ego does to prevent those um, id-like or even judgmental and um, embarrassing and shameful um, ideas, desires, memories, traumas from coming to the surface. Um, our psyche is delicate and the ego's job is to protect it by maintaining um, a nice calm state and sometimes remembering traumatic events or reliving embarrassing situations are just too much for the brain to handle. So. The ego uses defense mechanisms and there's four uh, key ones on the screen there. Displacement is when you know that you can't take out your anger or any emotion in particular settings such as at work. So instead the man comes home and uses his aggression towards his children instead. Repression is just refusing to admit um, that you can remember something or that something occurred by pushing it down inside your psyche. Sublimation is taking out your anger on something that is perhaps a little bit more acceptable, such as a boxer hitting a boxing bag when perhaps in real life he would like to box a person. And regression is when you become overwhelmed and therefore you regress back to a childlike state. So we see a man there who's sitting on the floor having a tantrum, having a cry, which is a childlike way of dealing with his emotions. Um, at the bottom of the screen there, and you can't click it because this is a video, but that is a really, really good video to watch um, that explains defense mechanisms better. So simplypsychology.org slash defense hyphen mechanisms.html.